We're back again. It's number three. It's Bloodborne Canehurst Castle. We're blitzing through them now. We have got the Canehurst Castle once again. And today we're going to be focusing on the stabby stabby Mrs. Forsaken spirit from the castle. And same as before, we're jumping right in. We've got our clean water. We've got our dirty water. We've got our kitchen roll. We've got our horrible wet palette that you're probably seeing as the same footage as the last two episodes. Get used to that because it's what I'm using. Popping on the wet palette sheet, getting rid of the crinkles. And that's pretty much everything I do to prep before I start painting my minis. So to start with Mrs. Stabby Stabby, we're going to prime her with some black, just like we did before with the last two. Then we're going to do some zenithal highlighting, because I just love zenithal highlighting. Taking my airbrush, taking some thinner, taking some cleaner. And that is everything that I need to start, apart from the fact that I actually do need some paint. So I'm going to use some white Liquitex ink, which is my favourite thing to zenithal highlight. Pop it in, give it some blowback, spray it from above, and that's your zenithal highlight pretty much. But you don't have to do this. This is just something that I like to do with little miniatures because I find it easier to make them look cooler this way. You can dry brush on a highlight on top, basically like creating the slap chop method. If you are interested in doing that kind of thing, just check out slap chop. It's basically dry brushing on a highlight on dark prime and using contrasts. And it's like super express fast way of painting minis with making them look really cool. But anyway, to start painting Mrs. Stabby Stabby, I'm gonna use some Apothecary White, which is a very, very sort of light gray contrast paint. It doesn't really react with anything that isn't a bright prime underneath, so it does work quite well with a sort of zenithal highlight, because obviously it won't react too much with the darker colors, keeps them darker. It will react well with the bright colors, giving that sort of like light bluish kind of gray tone to it. It's not hugely noticeable, but it's a good base to work with. Then I'm going to use some snake bite leather mixed with some contrast medium to sort of give us a nice thin brown tone which I'll use as a wash onto her sleeves and other parts of the dress like the sort of front textured frills. I'm sure there's a word for that but I'm not a fashionista so I'm going to call it front facing frills. FFF, front facing frills. So yeah, so that will be our tone for those. And onto the front corset as well. Those are the sort of areas that I'm targeting with it, just to sort of break up from the monotonous grey tone that is the main base of everything. Then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building up our highlights and to do that I'm just taking some grey tone like some Eshin grey mixing in some Corax white and I'm just going to start targeting the raised sort of wrinkles and flows of the dress. Basically try to keep it thin just targeting those raised areas and not hitting the sort of like deeper recesses much so basically you're creating that nice separation between the dark recesses to the bright highlights you know everything that I've spoken about in the kind of past two episodes and I'm going to continue to talk about in the next however many episodes there are to come. So yeah, basically just mapping out where I'm going to be sort of targeting these areas. These are sort of mid highlights, I guess you could call them. And then as I progress up through the colors, I'm just going to start adding more and more white into the mix and slowly start targeting thinner and thinner and thinner areas, the sort of more further out the dress is, sort of creating that nice tonal shift, I think you can call it, between the different greys. And then basically I can just take some glazes of that and just start blending between them to try and like even out those harsh transition lines basically. And then just repeat that process across pretty much the whole dress because, you know, these aren't the most colourful creatures in the world. So, you know, you've got to try and find interest and dynamism somewhere. And then I can tickle on some thin strands of white onto the front frills, I guess, to create the highlights on those, make them stand out a bit more, otherwise they kind of get lost in the muddiness of the grey. And then, yep, yeah, once again, I'm just going to take some bright, 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 bright white and just go straight into the centre of these wrinkles, just to sort of give us that brightest highlight white point, essentially. 
Then again, I can take some Eshan Grey and I can work it onto the sort of blindfold that's across her eyes because that's where a blindfold goes. And then same again, take some brighter whites into the mix, highlight them onto the sort of center and higher points and work up to this brightest white. Then I can take some bone color, like some more cast bone, keep it in it thin and then use that as the blonde hair and again mixing in whites to create the brighter points of the hair etc etc. Then some Rakarth flesh is a nice washed out fleshy tone which I can use to paint her pans, face, neck, keeping it thin so that it doesn't take away from the zenithal highlight underneath and then I can mix in again some whites into that Rakarth flesh and just start building up some brighter points on the face, neck, hands. Then I'm just going to paint in her hand clamps, locks, hand locks, wrist locks, handcuffs, handcuffs, wooden handcuffs with some snake bite leather for the brown and then just go back over the skin once more with some brighter highlights. Take some gun metal which is some lead belcher and I'll just use that to paint in stabby stabby knifey knifey. Because this is a spirit covered in blood, pretty grim, pretty sad, I'm just going to take the coagulated blood and just start dotting it around the wound and the knife and the blindfold just to kind of, you know, bloody her up. You can't play Bloodborne without there being blood and born. So coagulated blood will go onto the model for a nice finishing touch and that's pretty much what I've done to paint my forsaken castle spirit. And that's pretty much all there is to it for that one. That is number three of many Bloodborne miniatures that are coming your way. If you did enjoy today's episode, please be sure to drop it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already, because there's a lot more Bloodborne coming your way, along with you know my other dioramas and stuff that I have on the go at the moment. If you want to support the channel even further and join this lovely crew that are on the screen, please head to my Patreon. Consider joining me over there, because there's lots of behind-the-scenes stuff that I'm putting out. You can vote on the bigger videos that I do, the bigger and longer form videos with the bigger models. You can put votes towards what you want to see. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, if you did enjoy, please be sure to drop a like. And I will see you all next time for even more Bloodborne stuff. Peace and love. Pip pip. Cheerio. Toodaloo.